Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome back to Old World. We have our three cities up and running. We stole a city site from the Romans and we have access to a few of those ourselves still. Uh, we are also building a new settler to actually make use of that city site and we are producing a warrior to round out our army. So once these two warriors are completed, we'll have two nice warriors, a uh, slinger and some militia. So that should take care of our immediate um, military needs and then we really need to start focusing on actually doing something with all this territory because right now we only have this one worker running around and that's not going to cut it for very long so a lot of things to do in this episode let's get going I will also um, maybe start skipping some of the less uh, interesting events if there is not really anything to explain from a tutorial perspective or if there's just not enough impact on the gameplay to to really go through that if you don't like that if you do want to see everything let me know in the comments because i can always just uh, shift that to your needs but uh, i'm still trying to figure out how much to show because these episodes can get really long if i show everything but yeah if that's what you guys want uh, let me know so while exploring, we found another event and apparently we found an awesome sculpture amidst some ruins and we can either just choose to sell it to someone who will appreciate it more and get a quite a lot of, of gold from that, or we can display it in Parsec get a huge amount of culture and start an ambition for five developing cities. Considering we are definitely going to have five cities and we definitely want to develop them, uh, I think this is once again a very obvious um ambition to pick so i am going to go for this sounds pretty good so nothing too exciting happened for a few turns as i was exploring a little bit but then i met the hattie and this is another nation and they apparently have begun the construction of the oracle so in this game when you start building a world wonder it's yours no one else can start building it or complete it before you or anything like that like in civilization for example you you can do uh, no, if the wonder if you start the wonder, you need to actually do a huge investment in terms of resource in order to start it. But once you do, it's yours. Some other people have been converting to the religion as well, and specifically because the family is now the the Arsa the Ars Arsacit Arsacit Arsacit. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but anyway, because this family has now converted to our religion, their opinion of you has gone from pleased. They were already pretty happy with us too friendly and that this means that all their cities now have 10 percent less upkeep you can see it goes from minus 10 to minus 20. Um, any order leader will actually get two order bonuses as well and their family units have gotten stronger as well they went from a plus five percent strength to a plus ten percent strength so this is where you can really see the power of religion at work the Hattie also only have one city and they're all the way up here in the corner so they're, they are definitely not going to be an immediate threat. Now while I'm exploring it actually turns out that there is quite a lot of interesting stuff over here. There's a lot more Danes over here, three more. And that means that we have a lot of room to expand in this direction. Now of course we haven't met all the other factions yet, I think there should be one more. Um, so I'm not entirely sure where they are, they could actually be down here for example because right now it seems we have the Hattie over here, we have cards cartridge over here and then roam down here and we are doing pretty well in terms of our relative power so because we took this side we'll soon have control of this area and then i think we should start expanding to the east uh, no that's not the east this is the west anyway uh expanding towards the west and uh, basically grabbing some of these villages as, as much as we can we also saw that um Cartus has declared war on the Vandal, so I'm assuming they are starting to attack this, this side over here. Actually, I'm not entirely sure why we haven't seen any borders pop up over here. Maybe they haven't actually settled it yet. Uh, no, I don't think they did. They only have two cities, so they have one over here and probably one over here. So alternatively, what we could do is actually declare war on them and grab this city side from them. That's really aggressive. I'm not entirely sure I like that route because it does put us at some risk and I don't think there's any need to do so when we have a lot of other directions where we can expand into. I know I said I wasn't going to share all the details but I really like these small events that pop up every now and then and bring the world to life and kind of give you the ability to kind of think about what the story is behind what's happening in your empire. So right now we are arguing with Rome who has the better general so if we agree with them that they have an awesome general 
they will really like us for that, but our wife, who is currently our best general in our own army, will not appreciate that and basically no longer be able to be a general. So that's a pretty hefty thing to do to your own army. Um, or we can just tell Rome that we know our own wife is the best general there is and get um, basically our own wife to like us even better, but also get some legitimacy from that at the cost of some opinion. So I'm not afraid of Rome at the moment, so I'm not too worried that they will attack us. So let's just say our wife is awesome and Rome, you can stick it. Speaking of interesting events, um, there are some of these pop-ups that are not just one uh, decisions that you make during a single turn, but that actually uh, chain out over multiple years, sometimes even very long times. And this is one of these events. So apparently we got into some flirting with someone in our court and we can either see where the night takes us and that could lead to future events that might be several turns from now might be uh, might be dozens of turns from now uh, maybe we get a, a legitimate illegitimate child or uh, our wife finds out or something like that or it could actually be very beneficial to us we don't know that's kind of the point um however if we are like well we don't want to take this risk this doesn't fit the storyline i have in mind for my character or i simply do not want to take the risk if we have the required abilities on our leader and we do have that right now we can just say no and basically send her home so i am actually going to go for the more interesting route and i will make sure to share what happens later on and there you have it nine months later we have another child and this child is not a, a legitimate child so he or she cannot inherit the throne but we do have an additional family member that can be of use to us um it's a blessing to us all our wife does not necessarily agree um, she will become estranged and that will mean will take a huge hit to her um, a relationship with us. So that also means that it will impact her stats, uh, mission cost modifiers and things like that. But and that's how the cookie crumbles. And then we get another little event because we now have enough experience to gain our king another level and we get to pick an upgrade. So we can either make him cunning, uh, which I'll cover in a moment. We will be able to make him strict which basically means um, all the infantry units get more experience although I don't necessarily think this is a good upgrade because well experience is valuable but not that valuable I will, at least in my opinion we can lean into his already existing strength of courage a little bit more and every point that you get in addition to what you already have will be become more valuable so we, this actually nets us a plus 16 training which is a lot uh, and 10% in Parsa itself, which is not a lot at the moment. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily very useful. It's it, it w I would typically recommend that you kind of pick a strength and then lean into that very heavily. And both of these upgrades kind of fit the, the military theme. But I don't necessarily have a lot to do with these strengths at the moment. Um, we trained most of the units we are going to train for now. And therefore, I think we're going to lean into the cunning ability. Now, the cunning ability allows us to make caravans, which we can send to other nations for profit. And these caravans are actually produced by growth. And you know with what city actually has a very high growth amount? Yep, Parsa. Uh, and you need a cunning governor in that city in order to be able to produce those caravans. So I think this is a perfect choice in our specific situation. In the meanwhile, I'm also in the process of moving my army, or at least my single warrior, into the direction of the Danes. I do think we are going to take this city next, because it's fairly close to Rome. I'm not entirely sure what he intends to do with all these units. Hopefully not attack us, but yeah, I want to make sure we are claiming the sites closest to our current opponents. Um, by the way, Carter still hasn't claimed this one, as far as I can tell. And there is a lot of stuff to expand here, so we definitely want to start expanding after this one. We're going to go in this direction and clear these Danes off the map. Uh, and potentially even going for these Vandals that are left here, but I'm assuming Carthage will get that before us. Now on top of that, the uh, Settler is almost at the, second, the city site we got from Rome. We are now producing a worker over here and a worker over here, so we can really start getting some economy going. Our second warrior is almost done. And of course our um, slinger is going to be able to move in this direction as well. So we should be able to take some expansion um, on pretty soon. 
and it's time to found our fourth city now let's see we can either pick from the clerics the hunters or the riders the fourth option is no longer available um the clerics doesn't necessarily make sense they 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 don't necessarily make very strong cities other than the fact that they are very easy to keep keep happy uh, and we don't really have anything with monasteries or temples going on for the moment so it's going to be a rider or hunter city um we're not going to build any camps or nets here so then i think i'm leaning towards doing another rider city because again it's going to be connected from the get-go so that's really convenient uh, and we'll have a secondary location where we can build mounted units very easily with a lot of upgrades and this is kind of kind of going to be on the front line potentially with the Carthage being here, Rome being here, so being able to produce um, cavalry really easy over here is probably going to come in handy. So let's go for that. Um, oh, apparently there's a lake nearby as well. That's nice, and we are now known as the Pioneer. So we're really starting to gain some legitimacy. We have quite a lot of orders coming in every turn now. Uh, not to mention uh, the orders that we get from having all our families really pleased with us. We are all at plus 200 with each of them and that's really really strong so this is a very i think again a very good example of a very strong start in the early game now we are playing on a relatively low difficulty um it's, it's kind of the normal difficulty so to say so if you're going to be playing on hard difficulties the ai will have more cities and things like that so you'll have less room but still uh, it gives you a feel for the approach of the game now let's see what we set our cities to do. We actually have both of these Sassanid cities, uh, the hunter cities, that are idle. So let's see, let's start building a worker straight away so we can, well, not take care of that citrus, but at least start developing this a little bit. And then we are probably going to do the same over here as well. Uh, do we have all the resources for salt? I do believe so. Um, actually, it's going to be very beneficial if we uh, get the salt because the assassinate actually want this so that's a win-win there and we still need the land consolidation for the olive so that's not going to happen let's see um let's do some more exploring as well as you can see there is a lot of danes over here so at least uh, the hati should be able to expand if they want to it's not necessarily good news for us but hey um that's not going to be a problem either we do want some competition in this game not too much of interest over here uh we do uh, we have found the edge of the map over here because it's of course a game that plays in the old world we're not going to be to be traveling around the entire world or anything like that uh, oh more vandals Ooh, that's actually interesting we might want to prioritize that one it's quite a lot of units actually so there's three over here and one over here um and i just <laughs> I just moved my army to the other side of the map. Um, yeah, that's a thing. Although we should be able to grab this pretty easily. And then if we can grab this, we're basically cutting off Rome from this side of the map. Uh, they will be stuck in this corner. I'm not entirely sure what's over here. Of course, there could be tons of stuff over here. Um, but yeah, this is a very strategic location to pick because that will basically cut the map in half. It's also at the edge of the map, so it's relatively easy to defend if I wasn't stretching out so far. So that's the thing I don't like about this. So building, getting these two cities first, and maybe actually this city as well, um, could probably be a little bit more strategic because then I keep my cities kind of centered around my capital rather than trying to expand in a very kind of a lengthy eastward direction. Hmm... Mm -hmm. choices 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 okay so our son is growing up now and we can pick a direction for him to study in and this is a choice you will pretty much always get with a younger child that is your heir um you can either steer him into the direction of one of the four core strengths or you can just say go out into the world and then he will become exploring um those are basically unique events that can be all over the place. Uh, you're, you don't really have control over that. But if you want to kind of know what you're getting, then picking one of the four uh, options is, is best. Now, I actually think we might want him to become uh, very wise. That will give us a very strength, uh, a, a very um, sciencey leader. 
And for now, I, I think we're doing very well on the military part. We have a lot of cities, so we don't need the growth. Uh, politics could be an al alternative to that, but I think um, getting some science going could be useful. And remember, this global 0 0.5, it's not a lot, but it will start counting straight away. So you don't necessarily need to wait until he becomes our leader. It will become a lot stronger when he is. But until then, uh, we'll also be able to make use out of that. And here's another one of these events. Our son is growing up and boys will be boys. So he's kind of out and about with his friends. And we can either say that's okay. And he will become with the humble, righteous or bold. And basically that means he will get a pretty good straight, uh, trait that will give him a strength. Um, and also comes with some stat upgrades. Two of them to be exact. So it's uh, either uh, wisdom and charisma, wisdom and discipline or... Um, Righteous, which actually means uh, our cities are going to be uh, very happy or bold and then he will become uh, kind of like his father and very strong and military minded or we can scold him for not doing his studies and he will become disciplined so still a, a bonus for him but we actually get a bonus as well and we actually get the strict upgrade that we passed up on earlier um, again I don't think it's, there's necessarily a wrong choice here, but I don't don't want to focus too much on my own leader for this moment. So I think we're going to go and um, allow him to become with the humble, righteous, or bold. And I would definitely prefer him to be um, well, either humble or witty. Both of them work very well. The other options I don't think are necessarily as good, but hey, let's see what we get. Now we actually just gained a court soldier through an event. This is one of the vandals that apparently wanted to join us. We had to bribe her to do so, but it's actually going to be worth it. Because what you can do with this is tutor, uh, tutor a, a child. So if we tutor our heir, um, what will happen is in three years, he will either improve his wisdom, charisma, courage, or discipline. So all of that is very good or we will get some tutor event and of course um, this costs quite a bit of money 250 and two orders but i think this is definitely worth it and it's very valuable to have one of these in your um in your court now of course because she is a shield bearer it's most likely that she will improve his courage but hey there's nothing wrong with having better stats and there is a very large chance of getting something else because I, again i don't necessarily want him to be good at military things but hey if he is there's nothing uh, wrong with that it's always going to be beneficial in the meanwhile, our um, workers are starting to come online and then we have two workers in our capital. So I think it's now time because we have this insane amount of growth to start putting all those uh, civi or those civilians over here to use. We have two of them, two citizens, and that will basically allow us to kind of double up on any improvements that we have around our city. It's very useful, of course, but in addition to that, they also just not give you the same resources you already have over there. But you will actually gain additional resources as well. So for example, I am now building a um, stone cutter, which will provide us with more stone. But he will also provide us with one civic per year and one research per year. So it's very useful to have a lot of these specialists in order to boost basically every aspect of your empire. It will also expand the borders. It's not going to be particularly useful uh, due to these mountains. Uh, but for example over here once we start building some specialists on these uh, sheep we'll actually be able to expand onto all these open terrain over here as well now we have a worker over here and i've already constructed two mines while well, I'm, I'm working on the second which will help us complete this ambition and because we're building these mines over here I'm actually thinking um what we could do so we can actually build a shrine over here as well because we also have an ambition for shrines and we do have a shrine that will benefit from having mines close to it and that's the shrine of Attar. Now this will bring another religion into the world, uh, paganism in this case. Uh, we will be able to build acolytes but we'll also be uh, buffing our mines while we're at it. It's also going to give us some culture which in turn helps us get our five developing cities going because in order to have a developing city you need culture so this is kind of working in three ambitions at the same time 
And this is what I meant by thinking about what you're doing in what order. Now we do have these barbarians coming close. I'm not sure I'd be happy about that. But hopefully they'll just uh, stand there looking at us because that's all they've been doing so far. And if not, we can always bring our military units up there. Um, the military is in place now. I haven't declared war yet because I'm out of orders for this turn. I've also been making sure that we have a general in each of our units. So this is our queen and the slinger still. We have one of the the family leaders actually part of this um, warrior unit over here. He is pretty good at that. He gives uh, quite a lot of bonuses. Let's see where can we see that. Um, yeah, he gives us a lot of strength and bonuses and things like that. So uh, he also gives us an ability that the unit cannot die as long as it has more than one HP. Which makes it really hard to kill as long as we move it out once it gets into danger. And we have another warrior over here. Which uh, apparently does not have a general. I thought I, I did that as well. But I, I did give it a promotion. Um, and I've been promoting the other ones as well. Which you can see by the... Uh, the bars on their shoulders basically so we should be able to uh, take care of the danes pretty soon that also means that we're going to need another settler um, from one of these cities soon so probably after i've completed the stone cutter we'll be moving on to another settler and then doing another um another specialist and so on and because we have been doing a lot of exploring in the meanwhile, uh, nothing really of specific note that I've discovered other than some landmarks, but we did get another um, title, the Intrepid. And this means we can set another ambition. And in this case, we can set ambition for 20 urban improvements. That's a lot, honestly. Um, the ambitions are going to start to become harder and harder as we get more. So that makes sense since we're getting to the mid game now. Um, Alternatively, we can say we want to control six connected cities. We already have four, so this seems like the obvious choice. Or we can say nope and get a tiny amount of legitimacy as a result. So uh, I think this is the obvious choice in this case. Having to build another 19 urban improvements will take quite a long time. So let's go for the six connected cities. So we do actually need some more cities, but we're actively working on that. And having them connected is definitely something we're going to want to do one way or another anyway. Well, this is a little bit of dis disappointing. Uh, the prince actually got the upgrade that we want at least. He's now bold. And he gains two courage from that. So that's a lot. But it's not necessarily what we wanted. Well, we'll have to deal with it. And maybe um, if we get a very strong military reader, we can always take the fight to our enemies. Or gain from it in other ways. But um, yeah. Once again, you just have to deal with what you get. Um, Hattie apparently made peace with the Danes. And we get some more religious events now. So let's see. Um, we can have this skilled Kohan in our capital oversee our scribes. We'll get a lot of, um, a lot of civics from that. We can send her to improve relations with people from Judaism or we can turn her away and get a lot of experience. There's no bad event here so that's that's nice for a change. Um, I think we could stand from having some more reputation maybe. Although the civics is quite a lot as well. Um, and I mean we, we have a pretty solid relationship here and pretty much any, any head of this uh, religion is going to be better than our grandfather. Um, he's aged 84 anyway so he is going to uh, pass away sooner or rather than later uh, 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 um, this is tempting as well though so this is kind of the greedy approach this is worth about five turns worth of civics um, and that's quite a lot we should probably use that for something at some point and i do have some uses in mind but we cannot actually take advantage of that so we're saving this up but let's go for the civics because that will allow us to make some more interesting options later on maybe as well one of the things you can actually do with that civics is adopt the religion as your state religion that will actually help you keep your cities uh, happy uh, but it also will cost you civics per year per city and that's actually quite a lot of civics per year um, considering we have four cities at the moment and we don't necessarily need the whole thing with the relations uh, because as you can see our families are pretty happy with us. You can do this at any t moment, it's not a free event or anything like that. It will t always cost you 400 civics. 
Um, that's really expensive and not something I want to do right now. So that's the option I'm going to pick here. But it's something to keep in mind in case you're struggling with discontent. Alright, with our small little army over here ready to take out the Danes and then the barbarians that are apparently approaching our capital over here and are attacking our workers, uh, it is time to end this episode. So let me know in the comments, should I make these episodes shorter, longer, different, etc, etc. Uh, we are now in episode 4, I could have combined the first two and the last two. Uh, and made the two larger episodes if that's what you guys prefer. I can keep that in mind for future series. Um, generally speaking, if you have any questions on the game in the mid-game that we're now approaching, uh, let me know as well. I would be very happy to help you out with that. We also need to really start working on our ambitions in the next episode. We are in a very good position to do that. We can build some shrines, some mines, and to start developing our city. Make sure we actually have six cities up and running as well. Um, I, I'm a little bit um, sad now that I didn't pick the roads because that would make it a lot easier to actually connect these cities. But that's probably going to be one of the next things we do. Um, yeah, a lot of fun stuff to do and I do really enjoy this game. And I hope you're, I hope you're enjoying this series as well. If you're still here, you're awesome and I hope to catch you in the next one.